How should Bai Yi, who was unexpectedly swept into the world of Pokemon by the chaos caused by the time and space twin dragons, live without a system, legal identity, and a blank slate? Fortunately, Bai Yi was picked up by Dr. Daimu and after obtaining his assistant status, he first traveled with Xiao Ji, brutally beating the divine beast man to fulfill his dream and embarking on his own adventure. The combination of the naked cracked shell Johnny Turtle, the sickly queen Bulbasaur, the honest and honest dark crow, various abnormal elves, and the white game, this traveler, will become the most dazzling alien in this world Dr. Daiki. He is a good child Kaluna. He's really talented Helona. I have never experienced such a tiring battle before Sakaki. I owe this kid a favor, willing to send him off with the Rocket Empire. Chapter 1 New Adventures You are listening at NovelFull.audio Jinshin Town, Daimu Research Institute A teenager who looked 11 or 12 years old was putting a pot of fragrant egg fried rice on the table with several refreshing dishes. Doctor Brother Xiao Jian Dinner is ready. If you don't come out again, breakfast will be cold. This young man is called Bai Yi, born into the Blue Star Flower Planter. He is an ordinary high school graduate who came to this world two months ago. Two months ago, the underground organization of Shinao, the Galaxy Team, illegally conducted experiments at the Tianguan Mountain Ruins, causing a large amount of spatio-temporal turbulence. Guandu and Fengyuan, which are closer to the Shinao area, were also affected. Bai Yi was sent to this world by the spatio-temporal turbulence that appeared in the Kanto region. Moreover, Bai Yi's own time has been reversed, and his body has returned to the age of twelve. Due to disturbing the walking grass when landing, Bai Yi unfortunately inhaled a large amount of sleep powder and fell asleep directly. Coincidentally, Dr. Daimu went to the place where the turbulence of time and space appeared to investigate and rescued Bai Yi. Dr. Daiki reported Bai Yi's situation to the Alliance and took him in at his own research institute. As a fan of elves in his past life, Bai Yi naturally knew that Dr. Oki was a reliable senior, so he settled down at the Oki Research Institute with peace of mind. With super evolutionary intelligence and excellent cooking skills, he successfully obtained Dr. Oki's assistant job. Xiaoi, I just arrived at a group of new members Yusan family. Can you come and help me? Xiao Jian walked over to Bai Yi with an embarrassed expression on his face. This experienced elf observer was unexpectedly not good at interacting with babies. Okay. Here we go. The elf used by the newcomer is related to the authority and face of the research institute, so Bai Yi naturally didn't say anything and wiped his hands before going to the nursery. Xiao Jian smiled and quickly followed. Before leaving, he put a tablespoon of fried rice with eggs in his mouth, which was so fragrant that he almost cried. In the nursery, Bulbasaur and Little Fire Dragon were quietly eating elf food. After Bai Yi entered, he first touched Bulbasaur's head. Deny deny. This wonderful frog seed is a girl, and Bai Yi felt very comfortable touching it. She stretched out her cane whip and picked a flower from the vase to give to Bai Yi. The little fire dragon next to him saw Bai Yi and came over waving his teeth and claws, asking Bai Yi to raise himself high Bai Yi naturally wouldn't refuse. He lifted the little dragon and walked around the room three times before putting it down. According to the information, the father of this little fire dragon is a very flying flamethrower, and this child has always been looking forward to evolution. His favorite game every day is being raised high. They are all very well behaved, what's wrong, Xiao Jian? Upon hearing Bai Yi's words, Xiao Jian helplessly pointed to the corner. Bai Yi looked in the direction pointed by Xiao Jian and saw a turtle shell lying quietly on the table. You truly deserve to be a turtle. Bai Yi thought to himself and walked towards the turtle shell. Johnny Turtle. Hello, have you slept yet? No response. Bai Yi gently picked up the turtle shell and found that it was much lighter than he thought. Upon closer inspection, he only had a shell in his hand and no turtle. Johnny Johnny. The voice of the Jenny turtle came from behind. 
Bai Yi followed the sound and saw a jenny turtle with a water blue body and no shell walking out from behind the curtain. Its watery big eyes were fixed on the shell in Bai Yi's hand. Johnny Turtle. Johnny Johnny, how did you steal my clothes? Sorry, I don't know. Bai Yi put down the turtle shell with a mix of tears and laughter. Unexpectedly, Johnny Turtle was not shy at all and walked over barefoot with such a square step. Meow Frog Seed blushed and used a cane whip to block his eyes. Deny Deny Rogue, this Johnny Turtle was surprisingly agile, able to jump onto the table with the help of the sofa, and then quickly crawled into its shell. As a result, Johnny Turtle accidentally placed its shell upside down and when it crawled out again, its back was facing downwards, so it couldn't get up. Bai E had to help it flip over. The flipped over Johnny Turtle finally stood up, its shiny brain bag scrutinized by E up and down, then gently patted by E, taking out a few pieces of elf food from its shell and handing it to him. Johnny Johnny. The young man is very polite. Turtle brother is treating us today, the food and drink are good. Bai E suddenly felt that this bastard was good at social expenses, and quickly waved his hand to show that he didn't need to be polite. Xiao Jian anxiously told Bai Yi that there was something wrong with this Jenny turtle. Not only disobedient, but also self.taught a strange shell-breaking skill. The typical shell-breaking skill is to break a layer of energy body on the surface. This Johnny turtle really crawled out of its shell and always likes to be naked, giving birth to a problematic child. In fact, this Johnny Turtle is not the first time he has come to the Daiki Institute. Before Bai Yi arrived, this Jenny Turtle was sent to the breeding house several times, but because no one liked it, it had to be returned. Although I don't know who the newcomer is this time, I probably wouldn't choose this problematic Johnny Turtle, right? Seeing the two people in front of him looking at him in pain, Johnny Turtle didn't say anything. He silently put on his turtle shell, jumped off the table, and walked to the window to sit down. Seeing the lonely appearance of Jenny Turtle, Bai Yi felt a little sorry. Then he picked up a teapot and took two cups, one big and one small, and walked to Jenny Turtle's side. He poured himself and Jenny Turtle a cup of tea each. What's going on, brother? Take two whole cups. Johnny Turtle looked at Bai Yi and felt a bit lost. It was the first time he had encountered such a human. Don't pretend to be with me. I did it. Bai Yi lightly touched a cup with Johnny Turtle and drank the tea in one gulp. Okay it tastes so bad. The tea brewed from matcha powder, Bai Yi still hasn't gotten used to it. Watching Bai Yi's casual behavior, Johnny Turtle felt that this human was a bit different and comfortable to be with him. Johnny Turtle patted Bai Yi's leg and picked up a teacup to accompany him, brother, there's a massive amount. Come on, have another drink. Bai Yi poured another cup for Johnny Turtle and himself, and forced himself to drink until he felt uncomfortable. Let me tell you, buddy. After listening to my brother's advice, they all say that the Millennial King and 80,000-year-old Turtle are just a bunch of little brats compared to you. Do we have to be serious and set a good example for our children in front of them? Johnny Johnny, big brother, what you said makes sense, keep talking. Johnny Turtle's watery big eyes sparkled with wisdom, nodding as he listened. He couldn't help but drink a cup, and then effortlessly picked up the teapot with his short hand to refill the tea for Bai Yi. Xiao Jian was stunned when he saw this scene. Bai Yi didn't stop Johnny Turtle either, he just chuckled in his heart. Talented children often prefer to be praised, and the same goes for elves. So, these elves often choose to be funny to attract attention in order to make others notice them. People who don't understand this will only rudely label these children as problematic children. This Johnny Turtle needs attention, recognition, and communication in its own way. Once someone enters the world of this Johnny Turtle, it will be even more obedient than imagined. Elves are creatures that know how to cherish more than humans, and they want to show their best side to trainers who recognize them. As we delved deeper into communication, each person and turtle were clearly drinking tea, but the art style also began to tilt. Johnny Johnny, 
brother, in the future, in the backyard, big brother, it's very useful, brother turtle, listen to my brother. All right, let's not make any fuss or scare the children. It's useless. Going out is better than anything else. Johnny. 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 Will you take me away? Brother, big brother will recognize you, by E did not directly answer Johnny Turtle. Brother Turtle, just be obedient. There are plenty of excellent trainers. Johnny. If you take me away, I'll be obedient, just as one person and one turtle were deadlocked, Dr. Oki's voice came from the door. Oh my, it seems that this Johnny Turtle really likes you. Chapter 2 Johnny Turtle, it's up to you. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Doctor, Xiaoyi really has a solution. Xiao Jian stood up to offer credit to Bai Yi, and Dr. Dai Mu nodded in satisfaction. Dr. Daiki has always trusted Bai Yi. He said that when Bai Yi saw the elves, he only saw the touching love in Xiao Ji's eyes. So Dr. Daiki is willing to believe that Bai Yi must be a good child with love. Xiaoyi, I came here to talk to you about something. Dr. Daiki told Bai Yi that Mr. Damalanki called and the Alliance has ended its supervision of Bai Yi. Starting today, he can freely live in this world and has the right to cultivate elves. These three elves were specially prepared by Dr. Daiki for Bai Yi, and Bai Yi can choose one as his companion. Upon hearing Dr. Oki's words, Bulbasaur and Little Fire Dragon also walked step by step to Bai Yi. The three little cuties are eagerly anticipating that they can freely choose themselves. Bai Yi didn't expect happiness to come so suddenly. He was just thinking about who could get such a lovely elf. So it's me. Bai Yi squinted his eyes and carefully observed the three elves in front of him. The turbulence of time and space not only made Bai Yi a few years younger, but also gave him the ability to see the future of elves. As his attention became more focused, the bodies of Johnny Turtle and Bulbasaur in Bai Yi's eyes emitted bursts of red light, while Little Fire Dragon emitted a faint purple light. The red light represents that the upper limit of the elf's future is champion level, while the purple light is king level. This is what Bai Yi has summarized in the past two months through the backyard of Dr. Oki. Things like Kochi's Cabby Beast, Lizard King, and King Yen are all shining red, the leader of Kenteo and the Lobster Soldier are purple lights. The Bulbasaur Frog Seed has a purple light with a hint of red. Dr. Daiki's Fast Dragon and Bag Dragon are mixed with brilliant golden light in the red light, making people unable to open their eyes. Looking at the three little ones in front of him, Bai Yi couldn't help but marvel at how kind Dr. Oki was to him. Xiao Jian looked at Bai Yi silently, feeling very strange. He thought Bai Yi would definitely choose Jenny Turtle without hesitation. Xiao Yi must have been conceptualizing the future development path of each elf in his mind, in order to determine which elf he should choose, right? It must be like this. It's rare for Xiaoyi to maintain such a strict, cautious, and responsible attitude towards the elves in such an exciting moment. No wonder Dr. Oki likes him so much. I've made a decision. I want Johnny Turtle. Although Bulbasaur seeds can quickly form to replace poison, Johnny Turtle is also excellent and has learned how to break shells. Moreover, Bai Yi also talks about romantic relationships. He is worried that no one will choose Johnny Turtle except for himself. Upon hearing Bai Yi's words, the faces of the three elves were filled with joy and sorrow. Johnny Turtle was naturally overjoyed, even taking off his shell again and performing a shell stripping dance around Bai Yi's legs. Bang! Bai Yi slammed his brain on Johnny's glands, telling him that in the future, except for battles, he was not allowed to use his shell casually. Although Little Fire Dragon was somewhat disappointed, it didn't matter. It was just in a hurry to evolve and not in a hurry to go out. The only girl, Bulbasaur, was tearful and ended up crying loudly. Bulbasaur Seed Deny deny, I just accepted Hua Hua and now I'm abandoning her, scumbag. There's nothing good about a man. Seeing the cute Bulbasaur crying, Bai Yi couldn't help but laugh and cry. 
Good child, you are so cute, you will definitely be chosen by others early on. Dr. Daiki looked at Bai Yi with relief and then said a soft word. Old buddy, Lei Guang Palm. With a flash of red light, Dr. Oki's fast dragon flew out of the Pokemon ball. Before Bai Yi could react, his ankle felt a sharp pain, and the positioning ring that had been tied to Bai Yi's foot was removed. This is what the alliance has put on Bai Yi. As long as Bai Yi leaves the range of Jinshin town or wants to forcefully dismantle it, the positioning ring will immediately release a current similar to 100,000 volts. After all, Bai Yi was brought to this world by the turbulence of time and space, and his identity is unknown. At first, Dr. Daimu strongly opposed it, but Bai Yi voluntarily agreed to wear a positioning ring in order to avoid making Dr. Daimu difficult. Thank you, doctor, but do you need to make it so grand? Isn't the key in your hand? Although Bai Yi was very happy, he still had lingering fear at the moment. The old man was too good at playing. That is to say, this champion-level fast dragon can be so fast that it can be destroyed before the positioning ring reacts, otherwise its own life will be in danger. Upon hearing this, Dr. Daiki gave a shy chuckle. I lost the key. Rubbing the painful foot bowl, Bai Yi was moved and finally waited for this day. Although Dr. Daiki's assistant works well, Bai Yi hopes to go further, see more elves, tame a few of his favorite elves, and live freely and happily with everyone. If given the opportunity, I will personally make up for any regrets left in my previous anime. Having lived a dull life for 19 years, now traversing a time, Bai Yi hopes to live happily and happily. Here, Xiaoyi, this is a gift for you. Elf Guide and Elf Ball Dr. Daiki gave five empty Pokemon balls and a specially designed Pokemon guidebook to Bai Yi. Having a guidebook is equivalent to having the identity of a legitimate trainer in the Alliance. And this guidebook looks noticeably different, more advanced than in anime. Bai Yi quickly took it with both hands, and Dr. Oki told Bai Yi that this guidebook was different from the Alliance Universal Guidebook in the drawer. In the current generation of Jinshin Town, only Xiaoji and Xiao Mao had it, and in the previous generation, only Xiao Mao's cousin and several other outstanding people were eligible to hold it. Bai Yi naturally knew who the holders of the several guidebooks mentioned by Dr. Daimu were. After traveling through these two months, Bai Yi also discovered some clues. It is unclear whether they were influenced by the turbulence of time and space, or whether they were already living in this world, red and green. These people will see each other sooner or later, and Bai Yi is not in a hurry either. Unlike Xiao Ji's fiery red and Xiao Mao's noble black gold, Bai Yi's elf guidebook is water blue, peaceful and steady. Xiao Jian was also happy for Bai Yi when he saw Dr. Daimu handing him the guidebook. It's a bit regrettable that it will be difficult to eat the food made by Bai Yi in the future. Pick up. A familiar voice came from the door, and everyone followed it to see a big yellow mouse rushing up. Then, two familiar teenagers walked in. Dr. Daiki. Grandpa, Xiao Mao, do you look great? And Xiaoji, congratulations again on dominating the battle development zone. You worked very hard. Dr. Daiki looked at the two younger generations with satisfaction and guessed that they must have met on the outskirts of Jinshin town before returning to the research institute at the same time. Bai Yi looked at the two people quietly, with countless thoughts. Xiao Mao gives people a sense of reliability, and although Xiao Ji's passion is hard to cool, he is no longer as childish as before. After passing through the five dungeons of Kanto, Chengdu, Orange Islands, Feng Yuan, and Battle Development Zone, Xiao Ji has shed his childishness and his gaze has become resolute. The only constant is the dream of becoming the world's most outstanding Pokémon master. Hello, Xiao Ji, Pikachu. Hee <laughs> hee, hello Xiaoyi. Pick up. V, V. Xiao Mao and Bai Yi had already been in contact with Bai Yi when he provided super evolutionary intelligence. However, it was the first time Bai Yi and Xiao Ji had contact, and the two of them approached at the same time, shaking hands in a friendly manner. 
Although Bai Yi got to know Xiao Ji on the phone when he replaced the elf with Xiao Ji before, today he finally saw someone alive and couldn't hide his excitement. After the eight masters competition, Bai Yi thought he would never see this foolish thing again. I didn't expect to be able to not only see but also touch now. Seeing two energetic young people shaking hands, Dr. Oki smiled and picked up trouble beside him. Xiaoji, I have good news for you. Xiaoyi has just obtained his initial elf. Really? Xiaoyi. Let's fight. Seeing Xiaoji's enthusiastic expression, Bai Yi's heart was deeply moved and his blood couldn't help but boil. Bart Road Wash Oil Boy. Stupid thing, come and fight. Xiao Ji. Chapter 3. Bai Yi vs. Xiao Ji. You are listening at novelfull.audio. On the grassland in front of the Daiki Research Institute, Bai Yi and Xiao Ji are about to start their first elf battle. The referee is voluntarily appointed by Xiao Mao. Pikachu. It's up to you. As the initiator of the battle, Xiao Ji prioritized Pikachu's deployment. Pick up. Pikachu ran to the battle position and looked confidently at the opposite side, with several arcs emanating from the electrical bags on both sides. Show your face, little darling. Bai Yi lightly threw the Pokemon ball and released the Johnny Turtle. Johnny Johnny. Boss, who are we hitting? Johnny Turtle made a domineering appearance, sweating profusely when he saw the murderous Pikachu on the other side. He turned around and glanced at Bai Yi. Boss, are you serious? This thing on the opposite side is at least level 70, and I am still a level 5 baby. Bai Yi said don't use this trick. I have already looked at your information with a picture book, so it's useless to pretend. Johnny Turtle Little Turtle Pokemon, will hide inside the turtle shell to protect oneself, and will immediately spray water to counterattack when the opponent shows a flaw features. Rapids, Properties Water System, Gender Male Sign, Level 11, Techniques Impact, Water Gun, Shell Shrinking, High Speed Rotation, Shell Breaking, Genetic Move Waveguide Missile, When he saw this attribute panel, Bai Yi was also surprised. He didn't expect that this Johnny Turtle had inherited a waveguide bullet. Moreover, Xiaoji's wave has a shun attribute, and my advantage lies in me. Since you're not attacking, then let's attack first. Pikachu, a flash of lightning. Upon hearing Xiaoji's command, Pikachu instantly turned into a white electric light and rushed out. Johnny Turtle, after shrinking its shell, rotates at high speed. The Jenny Turtle immediately shrank its shell, and although Pikachu's lightning flashed quickly, the turtle's shell shrank instinctively. Pick up. Pikachu let out a painful cry, then quickly turned around and bounced off the lightning, causing Pikachu to be thrown out. Johnny Turtle was stunned when he saw Pikachu flying backwards. Very strong. I am really strong. Seeing this scene, Bai Yi had a clear idea in his heart. Johnny Turtle, use a broken shell. Johnny Turtle crawled out of its shell with a whoosh, emitting a bright red light all over its body. Xiao Mao on the referee's seat frowned upon seeing this scene and lowered his head to ask Dr. Oki in a low voice. Grandpa, although Xiaoyi loves elves, he is still a beginner in battles. Pikachu hasn't done much yet, so he's thinking about a decisive battle. Take a look again, this child wouldn't be so reckless. Dr. Daiki has full confidence in Bai Yi, and Bai Yi's eyes are quite clear, not like those of his superiors. The ultimate move of breaking the shell is to significantly increase both attack and speed at the cost of reducing double resistance. Although it is dangerous for Johnny Turtle to use this move recklessly when facing Pikachu from the electrical system, it may not necessarily result in death penalty. At this point, Pikachu also stabilized his body and the high dot speed rotation did not cause much damage. Pikachu, use 100,000 volts. Xiaoji has used his signature skills. No matter how strong the Johnny Turtle is, it will ultimately be a water system. Looking at the 100,000 volts rushing in, 
Bai Yi smiled slightly. Johnny Turtle. Use the turtle shell as a shield. The Johnny Turtle lifted its shell forward and its smooth armor bounced out a current of 100,000 volts. What? Observing the battle, Xiao Mao was shocked by Bai Yi's unconventional card play, and Xiao Ji was also stunned. He felt that this move was incredibly friendly, but couldn't remember where he had seen it before. Dr. Daiki stood on the side laughing but remained silent. Only Bai Yi knew that his move was a copy of the famous scene in the anime where Xiao Ji's water otter used scallops to block the skill. One more time, 100,000 volts. Xiao Ji didn't believe in evil and ordered Pikachu to use 100,000 volts of electricity several times, all of which were blocked by Johnny Turtle without exception. Pikachu, use the iron tail. Since 100,000 volts have been sealed, Xiao Ji will use close combat to determine the winner. Pikachu's tail emitted a milky white light and rushed towards the Johnny Turtle. Water gun, charge your feet. Bai Yi was waiting for this moment when he saw Johnny Turtle firing a water gun, Pikachu's foot slipping, and his iron tail disappearing directly. Johnny Turtle fired another water gun, and Pikachu was directly charged out. Break the shell again. Johnny Turtle's body once again lit up with red light, and Xiaoji saw that he had completed another enhancement and knew he couldn't delay it anymore. Pikachu, use the volt attack to determine the winner. Pick up trucks, pick up trucks, pick up trucks. Pikachu, wrapped in a golden thunderbolt, rushed towards the Johnny Turtle. Waveguide missile. Johnny Turtle rubbed a wave missile with his hand and threw it towards Pikachu. After two rounds of shell breaking and strengthening, the waveguide missile was almost as big as Johnny Turtle's body. Use a water gun. Push the waveguide bullet over. Bai E ordered that Johnny Turtle use a water gun to accelerate and push the waveguide projectile flying in midair. Bang! The volt attack collided with the waveguide bomb, and the thick smoke generated by the explosion enveloped the entire battlefield. The smoke dissipated, and Pikachu was already lying on the ground with mosquito coils in his eyes. End of work. Johnny Turtle sat panting on the ground, although it had not lost its combat ability, using such a strong waveguide was still too difficult for it now. Pikachu lost his combat ability, and the Johnny Turtle won, so the winner is a white card. Xiao Mao promptly announced the results. Thank you very much, Johnny Turtle. Xiao Ji, you and Pikachu are very strong. Bai Yi did not immediately retrieve the genie turtle from the Pake Ball, but instead walked over to Xiao Ji holding the genie turtle. The waveguide power of contemporary waveguide warriors, even if unconsciously dissipated, is of great benefit to the Johnny Turtle. As for whether the Johnny Turtle will become closer to Xiao Ji due to his waveguide power, Bai Yi is not worried about this at all. Johnny Turtle is his first elf, and there is also a bond between himself and Johnny Turtle. After getting close to Xiaoji, Johnny Turtle only felt a lot of emptiness caused by using the waveguide bomb, and he didn't know why it had eased. I'm sorry, Pikachu. I thought I could definitely win. Xiaoji held Pikachu in his arms, feeling a bit guilty. When he saw Bai Yi coming over to show goodwill, he also generously affirmed him. Where, Xiaoyi, you're really amazing. We can't even hurt Johnny Turtle. Pikachu. Pikachu. Do you believe the 100,000 volt warning again? Bai Yi smiled and touched Pikachu's head. As a reward, he helped him press the muscle under the electrical bag, and Pikachu let out a comfortable cry. Today, Ben Pai will let you go first. So, we can't just get complacent and forget about it casually. Xiao Mao walked over. Xiaoyi, congratulations. You won a beautiful battle just now. Thank you, Xiao Mao. Bai Yi retrieved the genie turtle from the Pake Ball and nodded at Xiao Mao. Xiao Mao looked at Xiao Ji with a smile on his face, but his tone was somewhat stern. Don't get complacent just because you dominate the battle development zone. Don't forget, there are still many powerful trainers in this world that you don't know about. 
Bai Yi decisively retreated a few steps and hid on the side, secretly eating melons. Originally, in order to prevent Xiao Zhi from becoming complacent, this scene should have been fought by Xiao Mao and Xiao Zhi. Now that he has his own presence, although Xiao Mao did not take action, he still earnestly advises. Damn it! Xiao Mao! Let's also have a battle! Xiao Zhi didn't have a fight with Xiao Mao, so naturally he wasn't as convinced as in the anime. As the two of them drew their swords and crossbows, Dr. Oki stepped forward to ease the atmosphere and told Xiao Zhi that their family was ready for the party, and Pikachu also needed to rest. It was better to go to Xiao Zhi's house for a big meal first. Xiao Zhi had no choice but to reluctantly let go of Xiao Mao first. Chapter 4 Go to the Divine and Arcane Place You are listening at NovelFull.audio Xiao Zhi's mother Huazi knew that Xiao Zhi was coming back today, so she got up early and prepared a table of dishes that Xiao Zhi liked to eat. Xiao Zhi went home first, while Bai Yi prepared a four-pound spicy grilled fish as a gift. Xiao Mao's electric shock monster carried the oven, and the two followed Dr. Daimu to Xiao Zhi's house. After the suction cup puppet opened the door, she saw a lively and charming figure welcoming her. Dr. Daimu, Xiao Mao has also returned. Come in quickly, Xiao Yi. You are such a polite child every time. Sure, hello, Sister Huazi. Bai Yi said this with his mouth, but his body bowed deeply and performed a proper junior salute. Oh, this child, really. My little wisdom is the same age as you, called Auntie. Hua Zi covered her mouth and smiled coquettishly. This child is really good at talking. Being called sister by someone like her own son, Hua Zi was very happy, and her face blushed like a blooming peony. Bai Yi couldn't help but glance at Dr. Daimu. Old man, there are some things that cannot be entirely blamed on you. Upon hearing everyone coming, Xiao Zhi and Pikachu quickly descended the stairs, and a pig suddenly sat down at the dining table. Bai Yi and Xiao Mao were also polite and immediately released their elves, marking the official start of the banquet. This family banquet is in the form of a party, so everyone is more casual. Xiao Mao, where are you planning to go next? Bai Yi walked over with a cup of cola, and Xiao Mao lightly touched Bai Yi with juice. Prepare to return to Shinao Place in the afternoon. So anxious. There's no way, there's still a lot of work to do. After Xiao Mao finished speaking, he turned his head and glanced at Xiao Zhi, who was shaking off his cheeks and eating wildly. Bai Yi smiled slightly, it seemed that Xiao Mao was still very worried about Xiao Zhi. Xiao Mao, if you're going back to Shinao in the afternoon, can you take Bai Yi with you? Dr. Daiki walked over. Xiao Yi, could you please go to Shinao with Xiao Mao? Dr. Yamanashi from the Shinao region heard about the lifting of Bai Yi's ban and just called Dr. Oki. Because Bai Yi's sudden appearance was related to the actions of the Galaxy team at Tianguan Mountain more than two months ago, Dr. Yamanashi hopes that Bai Yi can come to the research institute to see if there will be any new discoveries. Although Dr. Yamanashi is rigorous, these old scholars are all impatient on academic issues, and Dr. Yamanashi is also a senior to Dr. Oki, which is difficult to refuse. It's okay, doctor. I'll go to the Shinao place with Xiao Mao this afternoon. Bai Yi has no choice but to do so. Dr. Daimu is so kind to me, and of course I won't let him be in a difficult situation. Moreover, my current identity is as an assistant to the doctor, and listening to the doctor's arrangements is already my responsibility. Moreover, there are many elves in the Shinao area that attract players. But Grandpa, why do you have to go with me? Xiaoyi has just lifted his ban, so Dr. Yamanashi shouldn't be so anxious, right? Xiao Mao keenly noticed the problem, and in his memory, although Dr. Yamanashi was strict, he would not be so indifferent. This is a long story to say. Dr. Daiki looked at the two and gave a bitter smile. Although the ban on Bai Yi has been lifted, there is still a three-dot-month inspection period. During these three months, although Bai Yi can go anywhere, 
he must be accompanied by a senior trainer with more than two years of training qualifications and travel to at least two regions. And for these three months, Baiyi cannot take public planes. For this reason, Damalanki, for the sake of Dr. Oki and Dr. Yamanashi's face, specially granted them a helicopter that flew directly to the Shineo area, and it has now been parked on the outskirts of Jinchin town. Dr. Daiki looked at Baiyi with some embarrassment. Xiaoyi, we still have a lot of trust in you, but regulations are regulations, and I don't want to make it too special. I hope you understand. It's okay, doctor. I understand. Bai Yi didn't mind, he didn't object to traveling with Xiao Mao, and then touched him with his arm. Please take good care of me in the future. You can see it through. Xiao Mao smiled and then put the juice cup aside. So grandpa, it's not too late. Let's go back to the Shaneo place first. Dr. Daiki nodded, and Bai Yi also drank the cola from his cup in one gulp. Then, he greeted Xiaoji and Aunt Huazi. Upon hearing that Bai Yi was still under three months of detention, Aunt Huazi felt a little heartbroken. Bai Yi's gaze was somewhat similar to Xiao Ji's, so after learning about Bai Yi's situation, Hua Zi always felt sorry for the child who had left his hometown and took good care of Bai Yi. It's really bullying, Xiao Yi. You need to take care of yourself outside, okay? Don't worry, Aunt Hua Zi. Xiao Ji heard that Xiao Mao was leaving almost choked on egg bun rice, clamoring to have a fight with him. Xiao Mao couldn't resist Xiao Ji's relentless fighting, and he used electric shock to fight against Warcraft and Xiao Ji. Poor Pai Shen loses twice a day. However, this also sparked Xiao Ji's strong interest in the Shineo region, and Bai Yi believes that Xiao Ji will soon arrive in the Shineo region as well. After parting ways with a few people, Dr. Daimu drove Xiao Mao's luxury car and escorted Bai Yi and the two to the outskirts. The helicopter had been waiting here for a long time, and Dr. Oki instructed them to board the plane directly. Before takeoff, Dr. Daiki handed Bai Yi a card, which would regularly distribute Bai Yi's researcher allowance. On the plane, Bai Yi's eyes were always fixed on the scenery outside the window. Now he felt like a bird out of a cage, a dragon in the abyss, and a new adventure was finally about to begin. Xiao Mao, how did you travel between two regions before? Did you take a plane? Not really. Xiao Mao smiled slightly. In fact, the Tianguan Mountain in Shineo and the Silver Mountain Range in Guandu area are connected. Use flying elves to fly along the mountain without getting lost. When you arrive at a familiar place, ride a wind speed dog, which is fast and warm. Upon hearing Xiao Mao's Versailles, Bai Yi's mouth twitched slightly. In terms of arrogance, it must be you, young Master Mao. Due to the fact that this special flight is a direct flight to Jinsha Town, it arrived at the Union Public Airport on the outskirts of Jinsha Town before it completely darkened. After getting off the plane, Bai Yi took a deep breath of fresh air and looked at Master Yuan and Jia Chao peeking out from the nearby grass. Bai Yi felt that everything had become real. Divine and mysterious place, I'm here. Not far away, Dr. Yamanashi has been waiting with the staff of the Research Institute. Hello, Dr. Yamanashi. My grandfather, Dr. Oki, asked me to say hello to you. Oh, Xiao Mao, I'm sorry to end your vacation so quickly. Is Daimu okay? Although Dr. Yamanashi is of an advanced age, he has a tall and sturdy physique, a lively spirit, bright and lively eyes, and looks very stylish. This is my job as a researcher, my grandfather is very good. The two of them chatted briefly again, and then Xiao Mao introduced Bai Yi to Dr. Yamanashi. Bai Yi walked forward calmly and bowed to his elders as a sign of respect, which was not a specialty of childhood. Therefore, Bai Yi had no psychological barriers when he did it, and he was very strict in his rules. He knew that Dr. Yamanashi was a rigorous person. Hello, Dr. Yamanashi, I am Bai Yi. Thank you for your care. It's nothing, the Mu said you're a good child, and indeed you didn't take a wrong look. Let's go back to the research institute first. 
Chapter 5 Amrito and the Power of Emotions You are listening at NovelFull.audio Although Yamanashi Research Institute is not as large as Daiki Research Institute, it is still a fairly authoritative first-level research institute. After everyone entered the door, two kind-hearted assistants immediately welcomed them. Welcome back, Dr. Yamanashi, thank you for your hard work. Well, staying on duty at the research institute, you've also worked hard. Dr. Yamanashi nodded lightly and looked at his two assistants with approval. After carefully examining the two assistants, Bai Yi realized that he recognized them. In Jinjuan, Guanjian went to the research institute to lead the episode of the initial elves, and those two useless duos who couldn't even appease the Mook Eagles. All right, Xiaoyi, although you should take a break, the instrument has already started to operate. Could you please go and have a physical examination first? Dr. Yamanashi looked at Bai Yi and, after receiving his affirmative response, turned to look at his two assistants. Mr. Bai Yi is Dr. Daimu's assistant, and I invited him to help. Please go and give him a comprehensive physical examination. The two assistants heard that Bai Yi was the assistant of the famous Dr. Daimu, and their expressions became more respectful. They turned around and took Bai Yi to the back. The equipment in the research institute is very comprehensive, but a detailed full-body examination took a full hour. When the examination was completed, Bai Yi felt exhausted all over. Dr. Yamanashi looked at Bai Yi's physical examination report with a serious expression and found that his various physical functions were not much different from those of ordinary children, except that his strength and physical fitness were much weaker. Xiao Mao looked at Bai Yi's physical examination report with a playful gaze. Xiaoyi, you can't do it, you're even weaker than Xiaoji. You're just empty. Your whole family is empty. Bai Yi pursed his lips, Xiao Ji is a super real newcomer. How can he compare himself? All right, Xiao Mao, why don't you go rest first? There's also Xiaoyi. Do you want to rest or visit? Doctor, can I visit the back mountain of the research institute? Dr. Yamanashi said of course it is possible, but it is necessary to pay attention to safety. Xiao Mao originally wanted electric shock warcraft to protect Bai Yi, but considering that nothing would happen within the scope of the Yamanashi Research Institute, he let Bai Yi go on his own. As for regulation. Who can prove that Bai Yi left Xiao Mao's sight? Thank you, Xiao Mao. Bai Yi greeted and turned around to leave the research institute. Before leaving, Dr. Yamanashi specifically told Bai Yi that the elves in the back mountain are all studying and observing, so please do not accept them. Just as he left the Yamanashi Institute, Bai Yi released the Johnny Turtle. If Bai Yi remembers correctly, there is a highly aggressive Aritos tribe in the back mountain of Yamanashi Research Institute. However, even level 5 Borge men can deal with them, and Johnny Turtles are more than enough. While the sky was not completely dark, Bai Yi arrived at the destination of his trip with Jenny Turtle. Heart Chi Lake one of the three holy mushrooms, Amrito, resides here, and Xiaoguang even saw its phantom at the beginning. The arrival of Bai Yi is at least related to the time and space twin dragons. I wonder if Amrito can save face and come out to meet him with this kind of love. I don't know if it's due to the legend of Amrito or because this is the territory of the Yamanashi Institute, and the water quality of Lake Shinchi is quite good. Johnny Johnny Boss, can I go swimming? Go ahead, don't pee. With Bai Yi's permission, the Jenny turtle plunged into the lake and swam happily. Bai Yi sat by the lake, feeling the gentle breeze brushing his face, listening to the sound of the lake water being washed away by the wind, and couldn't help but feel a little sleepy. I really don't know how to thank the galaxy team. How about waiting until Akira starts to reverse the world and find a way to pull him out? Stay in this world and eat a good meal, so that he can become a new person. Johnny Johnny. What's wrong with the boss? Mississippi. Johnny Turtle was stunned when he saw Bai Yi, and took the initiative to jump out of the water, diving directly into Bai Yi's arms and splashing him with water. It's okay, are you having fun? 
Johnny Turtle nodded repeatedly, the water here was sweet and sweet. When the boss helped him dominate the world, he settled down here and raised a bunch of minus to serve as a dormitory. Flip the brain gate of Johnny Turtle, by E gave a faint smile. It's already dark, but unfortunately I still haven't seen Emrito. Forget it, it's not in vain to make Johnny Turtle happy. Just as Bai E was about to leave, a whirlwind suddenly swept over the lake, and then white mist enveloped the entire surface of the lake. Bai E quickly stopped his steps. According to theory, it is impossible for a place with wind to condense thick fog. Now that such an abnormal phenomenon has occurred, it indicates that something about to appear must be unusual. Subsequently, both Bai E and Jenny Turtle heard a song like cry. A small pink mushroom appeared on the lake surface, dancing gracefully in the mist. Not a phantom. But rather the entity of Emrito. Old turtle, can we communicate with each other? Johnny Johnny. I'll give it a try. Bai Yi nodded. Johnny turtle can inherit the power of the waveguide, indicating that it masters the power of the waveguide. Emrito is the god of emotions, and it should not be difficult to communicate well. As a result, Jenny Turtle's next sentence was regretted by Bai E. Johnny Johnny. Heavenly King Guidey Tiger. Bai E wished he could slap Johnny Turtle, so I shouldn't tell you the story of how to outsmart Weihu Mountain. On the surface of the lake, Amrito's figure in the fog paused noticeably for a moment, and then the fog began to gradually thicken, blurring his figure. Wait a moment, Amrito. I have no ill intentions, let me see how you are. Bai shouted at the lake, originally not expecting Amrito to appear, but to his surprise, Amrito's figure really stopped. M. M. Bai E felt that the cry reached his heart, as if he was talking to himself. Hello human, I feel the familiar power in you, and your emotions. Are not what I have bestowed upon you, Amrito, I was brought to this world by Empress Luca and Pulucci, and I am indeed not a member of this world. It's like this. No wonder, the thick fog gradually dissipated, and the figure of Amrito gradually flew out. Human, I can feel your feelings for this Johnny Turtle, pure emotions make me very comfortable. Hello, Amrito, thank you for your opinion. Johnny Turtle is my companion and I really like it. The ruby in front of Amrito's forehead flickered red, and Bai E felt as if something had been added to his heart. Then, a heart-like red pattern appeared on the back of his hand. Human, I really like you. People think our existence is a legend, but I can feel that you believe it deeply. Today, you have made me feel pure emotions again, and I will lend you some emotional power. Amrito told Bai e that although he was brought to this world by the time and space twin dragons, he ultimately does not belong here and is not blessed by that great god. He is a black household. The power of time and space fluctuates slightly, and Bai e will once again be taken away from this world by the turbulence of time and space. And the power of emotions is equivalent to obtaining a temporary residence permit for Bai e, so that he will not be easily swept away by the turbulence of time and space. Thank you, Amrito. Bai E can feel that the benefits of emotional power to himself go beyond that. He can sense the emotions of humans and elves, and his affinity for superpower elves increases exponentially. However, even so, you should try to stay away from the place where the dual gods of time and space appear, unless... Halfway through, Amrito suddenly seemed startled and plunged straight into the bottom of the lake. Bai E also felt something unusual. Looking up, he saw two white lines cutting through the night sky like jets, drawing a semicircle in the air at a very fast speed, and then diving directly towards his position. Chapter 6 Helona and Diamond Soul You are listening at NovelFull.audio the flying object in the air got closer and finally landed five meters away from Bai E. This elf is over two meters tall, with spindle-shaped dragon horns and fierce eyes that exude a murderous aura. Its sharp teeth shimmer in the moonlight, and its two sharp shark fins are stained with crimson. Divine and precise. 
fiercely biting land sharks. Behind the fierce bite of Lu Shark, a golden beauty wearing a black windbreaker and high heels appeared in Bai Yi's field of vision. You don't even need to look at the soft and long hair that looks like a golden waterfall. Just look at this fiercely biting land shark, which emits red and gold light all over its body, and you know who the visitor is. The champion of Chanel, Halona Julan. Thank you for your hard work. Bite the land shark fiercely. Zyrona collected the fierce biting land shark into the Pokemon ball, and then walked towards Bai Yi one by one. Are you Dr. Daiki's assistant, teacher Bai Yi? Hello, Miss Sharona, it's an honor to meet the divine Olympian champion here. Through the emotional power she had just gained, Bai Yi could feel that Ziluona had a strong curiosity for herself. You don't have to be too cautious, teacher Bai. Your decision to lift the ban was the result of a joint vote by the high dot level officials in the Guandu and Shaneo regions. Ziluona smiled slightly and tried to minimize her deterrence. I voted in agreement. Thank you very much, Miss Helona. Bai Yi nodded slightly to pay his respects, and when he saw Helona's smile, he thought to himself, no wonder the travelers were shouting to marry Helona. This smile is irresistible to most people. However, Bai Yi is quite calm. His current body is difficult to regulate by emotions and hormones. Are you here to find Dr. Yamanashi this time? Dr. Yamanashi entrusted me to come over, but my main goal this time is to find you. Ziluona looked at Bai Yi. Please follow me. Johnny Johnny. Be careful, boss. This woman is very scary, Johnny Turtle suddenly stood between Bai Yi and Ziluona, his eyes fixed on Ziluona. Under the moonlight, it can be seen that Johnny Turtle's brain is covered in cold sweat. The fierce biting land shark was terrifyingly strong, and its sharp teeth could probably crush itself like chocolate and swallow it. However, even so, the Johnny Turtle still stood in front of Bai Yi without hesitation. Johnny Turtle, thank you, but it's okay with me. Bai Yi was moved and reached out to pick up Johnny Turtle, then turned around to apologize to Helona. Sorry, Miss Helona, this child is just worried about me. It's okay. Johnny Turtle struggled twice, unable to break free from Bai Yi's arm, and reluctantly patted his forehead. Big brother, you're confused. When someone smiles, you compromise. Do you know how terrifying this woman is? You don't even have to spit out bones to eat and wipe you clean. Bai Yi helplessly touched the head of Johnny Turtle, of course I knew. Zyrona smiled and took two steps closer, quietly staring at the Johnny Turtle. She reached out her tender white palm and gently touched the turtle's head. Johnny Turtle originally wanted to resist, but under the gaze of Helona, his body didn't listen to his brain, and his water blue brain bag was as red as cooked shrimp. At the same time, Johnny Turtle's waveguide also received Helona's heart. Although this big sister is very strong, it seems that she really won't do anything to the boss. Thinking of this, Johnny Turtle awkwardly crawled back into the Pokemon ball. Boss, I understand you now. I made you laugh, Miss Helona. This child is a bit shy. It's okay, you have a partner who cherishes you very much. The two of them were chatting while walking towards the Yamanashi Research Institute. Bai Yi remembered that he had known Johnny Turtle for less than a day, and couldn't help but feel inexplicable. Actually, Jenny Turtle and I only met today, and even I didn't expect our relationship to be so good. Every life will meet with other lives and eventually give birth to something. I seem to have seen a strong bond between you. This Johnny Turtle has a very good aptitude, so cultivate it well. Thank you for your kind words. The two of them returned to the Yamanashi Research Institute, and Bai Yi found that Dr. Yamanashi had not rested yet, apparently waiting for Sharona. Dr. Yamanashi, long time no see. Miss Helona, could you please put down your championship work and come and deliver something? I'm really sorry. It's nothing, after all, I'm also a scholar of mythology. 
After Helona finished speaking, she took out a package from her cloak and walked to the central control panel of the research institute, slowly opening the package. Bai Yi saw that Ziluona had taken out an irregular crystal that was the size of a human head, with a texture like a diamond, emitting a strange light under the light. The token of the time god Emperor Yaluka. Diamond Soul. No wonder, this treasure is indeed worthy of being personally escorted by the divine champion. Xiaoyi, please come closer and take a closer look at the diamond soul to see if anything happens. Upon hearing Dr. Yamanashi's words, Bai Yi nodded and took the initiative to approach the diamond soul. After getting closer, Amrito stayed at the pattern on the back of the white player's hand, slightly heating up. However, it seems that only Bai Yi can see this pattern, at least no one has noticed it so far. Half an hour has passed and nothing has happened yet. Bai Yi could only feel the heat emanating from the pattern of Amrito, but he was not sure what this heat represented. He can only feel that this change is not harmful to himself. Dr. Yamanashi and Helona were both somewhat disappointed, but they seemed to have been prepared and did not show much. It seems I've been overthinking it, Miss Helona. Thank you for your hard work. The research institute has already prepared the guest rooms. Dr. Yamanashi, I have to send the diamond soul back to the museum. Sorry for the inconvenience. Ziluona smiled and carefully wrapped the diamond soul again, placing it in her arms. Dr. Yamanashi originally intended to persuade Helona to be too late and be careful, but upon reflection, she still didn't speak up. Although the diamond soul is precious, no specific function has been discovered so far. It is only rumored to be related to Emperor Yaluka, and no one would take risks for a collectible. The Galaxy team may be interested in the Diamond Soul, but they went crazy to rob Helona. Before leaving, Helona looked at Bai Yi. Xiaoyi, I wonder if you have any plans next. Do you want to consider challenging the Shineo Alliance? If this is an invitation, I would be honored. Bai Yi's original intention was also to challenge the Shineo Alliance, so he did not deny it. Instead, he placed his hand on his chest and gently leaned down to signal. Seeing Bai Yi's appearance, Ziluona also gave a faint smile. Okay, I look forward to the day when you bring this Johnny Turtle to win in the Shineo League and challenge me. After Helona finished speaking, she greeted Dr. Yamanashi and walked outside the door to release the fierce biting land shark. Thank you for your hard work. Bite the land shark fiercely. After Helona sat down, the fierce biting land shark swung its two shark fins into a stream of light and flew into the night. After seeing off Sharona, Dr. Yamanashi turned to look at Bai Yi. Xiaoyi, do you really want to challenge the Shineo Alliance? Chapter 7 Conquering the Dark Crow You are listening at NovelFull.audio Yes, Doctor. My idea is that since I have arrived at Shineo, I might as well directly participate in this year's Shineo Alliance. Upon hearing Bai Yi's answer, Dr. Yamanashi stroked his beard with satisfaction. If Bai Yi stays in the Shineo area, it will be much more convenient for him to come and help with any further research related to the time and space twin dragons in the future. If that's the case, we can let Xiao Mao accompany you on a trip for a while, but. Dr. Yamanashi's words changed. Before that, I need to entrust you with something. Previously, in order to conduct experiments, the Galaxy Group rudely opened a tunnel on Tianguan Mountain and forcibly entered the remains of the gun pillar, which was very detrimental to the protection of the relics. So Dr. Yamanashi has developed a detailed protection plan, especially since this plan also involves heritage security, it is classified as confidential and cannot be mailed, only someone can be sent to deliver it. Dr. Yamanashi's researchers have their own tasks, so Dr. Yamanashi plans to send the documents to Tianguan Mountain by Xiaomao. However, Dr. Yamanashi had the initiative to approve the travel of Xiaomao and Bai Yi for a period of time, so this task can only be entrusted to Xiaomao and Bai Yi to perform together. Bai Yi is Dr. Daiki's assistant, and Dr. Yamanashi still trusts him. Upon hearing Dr. Yamanashi's commission, Bai Yi naturally accepted it casually. 
He also wanted to see what was different between the remains of the gun pillar on Tianguan Mountain and the real diamond. Great, but delegation is delegation. I won't ask for your help in vain, so I want to give you a thank you. Dr. Yamanashi paused and continued. In theory, I can give you an initial sprite for new players in the Divine Arcade, but in a few days, a little girl from Jinsha Town will come to choose her own initial sprite. Currently, there is only one group of new players in the Research Institute using sprites, so I cannot let you queue up before her, do you understand? Bai Yi nodded after listening, and Dr. Yamanashi was still very principled. And Bai Yi knows that the little girl Dr. Yamanashi mentioned is Guangjian. Jin Jiao is a rare male and female protagonist, and Xiao Guang and Bo Jiaman also have a rich storyline. If Bai Yi takes away the little flame monkey, it will not be good if it affects the meeting between Xiao Guang and Bo Jiaman. As for the grass seedling turtle, Bai Yi has long had a sense of belonging. Seeing Bai Yi so knowledgeable, Dr. Yamanashi was also pleased and then took out a Pokemon ball. I'm not sure if you're willing to raise this child. Through the red outer wall of the Pake Ball, Bai Yi vaguely saw a bird sprite in the shape of a crow inside. Dr. Yamanashi told Bai Yi that this is a dark crow. When this dark crow was encountered by Dr. Yamanashi, it suffered serious injuries and was cured by Dr. Yamanashi. After recovering from his injuries, the dark crow lived in Jinsha Town. Shaneo Tianguan Mountain has always been considered the origin of the world, so Shaneo is a place that places great importance on legendary stories. The level of superstition among its residents is second only to that of the urban areas. Here, the dark crow is believed to bring bad luck. It's okay to have trained dark crows, while dark crows are very unpopular. Especially this dark crow is very strange. Most nocturnal elves act at night and feel sleepy during the day, but this dark crow doesn't sleep much during the day, only sleeping for two hours each at dawn and noon. Even if he only sleeps for four hours every day, this dark crow is still lively and even in better condition. After a long time, people in Jinsha town are very afraid of it and do not allow their children to play with it. They even started to drive out the dark crow. The dark crow didn't fight back either, but often reluctantly went to see Dr. Yamanashi. Dr. Yamanashi had no choice but to put away the dark crow and wait for a trustworthy trainer. Doctor, what is the characteristic of this dark crow? Sleepless. You are truly Daiki's assistant, you are right. Dr. Yamanashi nodded and handed the dark crow's Pokemon ball over. Bai Yi is very fond of this dark crow in his heart. If Bai Yi wants to participate in the Suzuki festival, he will inevitably have to confront the grandson of the divine beast man. The sleeplessness of the dark crow can not only better target Darkly's dark hole, but also contain the evil faction of Ladios. Doctor, but I would like to ask for its opinion. Bai Yi believes that subduing elves requires effort, even if it's just verbal abuse. Directly throwing the ball or maliciously picking up leaks can all be considered as playing hooliganism. Dr. Yamanashi gave Bai Yi an appreciative glance, opened the pake ball, and released the dark crow. A half-meter tall crow-shaped elf with gentlemanly hat-shaped feathers on its head stood on the ground, its black and shiny feathers reflecting a slightly eerie light under the illumination of the light. Hello, dark crow. Bai Yi and the dark crow greeted each other, but the dark crow remained unmoved and even ignored them. The previous events made the dark crow unwilling to get close to humans. Dark crow, don't you have so much hostility towards me? Look, Dr. Yamanashi is also here. He won't harm you, will he? The dark crow looked at Dr. Yamanashi with questioning eyes, and Dr. Yamanashi nodded. The hostility in the dark crow's eyes was only slightly reduced. Dark crow, they don't like you because they are ignorant, but I really like you. Wow. I don't believe it, no one would like it. Bai Yi can feel the emotions of this crow through the power of emotions. Johnny Turtle, come out and help me. Bai Yi released the Johnny Turtle, and when the dark crow saw Bai Yi release the elf, he immediately entered a defensive position. 
If it weren't for the doctor beside him, the dark crow might have already taken action. Johnny Turtle, help me communicate with the dark crow. Johnny Turtle glanced at the dark crow, put his hand behind him, and took four steps to walk to the side of the dark crow. Johnny, Johnny Johnny. What's going on, brother? Do you want to fight my boss? I shouldn't have taught you how to speak northeastern dialect if you're covered in black lines. The dark crow is also confused. How can this bastard pay more social expenses than me? Jenny Turtle. You little bird, who are you calling a bastard? Sa Jia is your turtle brother. With Johnny Turtle, the dark crow is finally willing to communicate. This crow and turtle together is like a rogue encountering a bully, cursing in a few words, but the scene surprisingly harmonizes. In just a few minutes, the dark crow pounced and flew to the side of the Jenny Turtle, looking like a good buddy. Johnny Turtle proudly turned around and gave by E a flirtatious look, and it was settled. Although Johnny Turtles are all cute and big-eyed, by E always feels a bit cheap in their eyes immediately after, I saw the dark crow gently pressing against its pocket ball, pushing it towards by E and gesturing for him to subdue it. That way, it's like two crows from the cold and abandoned appearance before. Bai E looked at Johnny Turtle incredulously. Although he could feel the emotions of the elves, he still couldn't understand what was being said. Through Johnny Turtle's continuous talking and gestures, Bai E finally understood. Actually, it's not just humans, this dark crow is also not accepted by its kind. Because this dark crow is too honest. Although the dark crow is not as bad as people think, it does carry such a third degree of malice. Wild dark crows intentionally make night walkers lose their way or fall into illusions, and they find their panicked and panicked expressions amusing. This dark crow doesn't do it, it just wants to play with others. After a long time, other companions don't like it either. It feels like an anomaly to itself. Johnny Turtle told the Dark Crow that you just didn't find the right circle. You're not a normal Dark Crow, and I'm not a normal Johnny Turtle either. You happen to be walking with me, and we'll be together. As for this person who shovels feces, it is said that the elves are becoming more and more like their masters. Do you think I am like this? What kind of fun can he be? Maybe you will be the most normal one among the three of us. Although Johnny Turtle deserves a lot of beating, it has to be said that he has given the Dark Crow the sense of belonging and recognition it has always wanted. And not to mention by E, this Dark Crow did not harm anyone when it was expelled by the residents of Jinsha Town, which is very good. As for what Johnny Turtle said, Bai E didn't mind either. He was already the biggest outsider in this world. That Dark Crow, please give me more guidance in the future. Bai E was about to use the Pake Ball to subdue the Dark Crow when his finger was lightly pecked by the Dark Crow. Johnny Turtle told Bai E that the Dark Crow wanted to fight against Bai E. Bai E has no choice but to engage in battles, which indicates that this Dark Crow is very ambitious. So, after Johnny Turtle used a high dot speed spin to launch two pecking attacks, and when the Dark Crow was about to continue approaching, Johnny Turtle fired a waveguide bullet that crippled the Dark Crow, and Bai E threw the ball directly to subdue it. Dr. Yamanashi told Bai E to take a good rest today. Tomorrow morning, when the research institute returns, Bai E and Xiao Mao will have enough time to set off again. Chapter 8 Ibrahimovic of the Phantom Forest. You are listening at novelfull.audio. The next morning, Bai Yi and Xiao Mao brought their documents and prepared to depart. In the Xin Diamond, Xiao Mao only brought electric warcraft and moon elves in the Shineo area, but this time he brought a few of his old friends. When leaving the Daiki Research Institute, Bai Yi strongly demanded that Xiao Mao bring his own team. Xiao Mao thought it was Bai Yi who wanted to be open dot minded, so he brought the water arrow turtle, Nido Queen, wind speed dog, and giant claw mantis. Including electric shock warcraft and moon elves, now Xiao Mao has the strength of a second-rate heavenly king. The reason why Bai Yi did this is because he knew that Xiao Mao would meet Hunter J when protecting the shield armor dragon in the future. 
At that time, Xiao Mao only had two elves on his body, which can be said to have been driven away by Jay. Now Bai Yi wants to see if Hunter Jay's fierce salamander dares to compete with Xiao Mao. Outside Dr. Yamanashi's door, two museum-level Chishi green birds are eating fairy food, and they are also wearing the newly invented riding device in Arola. This was prepared by Dr. Yamanashi overnight. With these two Chishi green birds, Bai Yi and Bai Yi can fly straight to Tianguan Mountain. After arriving at Tianguan Mountain, the two Chishi Qingyao will directly return to the research institute, which is quite convenient. Thank you very much, Dr. Yamanashi. Bai Yi has no riding experience, and without this set of equipment, he may have some trouble. Dr. Yamanashi told them a few more words, and then they stepped onto the Chishi Green Bird. The cloud-like wings of the blue bird on Chishi Festival spread out and flew high into the sky quickly and steadily. Among the flying fairies riding, the Chishi Green Bird is not the fastest, but it is absolutely the most comfortable. It flies very steadily. The part of its wings close to its body can also shrink to a certain extent, so as to protect the trainer on its back from the cold wind. Xiao Mao, how about we go down first? As he was about to arrive in Zhuqing City, Bai Yi suddenly shouted to Xiao Mao. There is a forest below, let's rest for a while. Xiao Yi, the forest below is a psychedelic forest, and there are often startled deer around the perimeter, which is quite dangerous. I'll make you something delicious. Get down. I guarantee your safety, young Master Mao. After they went down, they found a relatively open place to camp, prepared food and water for the Chishi Green Bird, and agreed to rest for two hours before continuing to set out. Bai Yi opened his backpack and took out a portable gas stove, moo milk, and a small milk pot, all of which Aunt Huazi had prepared for Bai Yi before leaving. Electric Shock Warcraft, could you please go pick some fresh tree fruits? Giant Claw Praying Mantis, could you please find some honey to bring back? After hearing Bai Yi's instructions and obtaining Xiao Mao's permission, the two powerful figures transformed into two beams of gold and red and disappeared into the dense forest. Johnny Turtle rested directly on the thighs of the water arrow turtle, while the dark crow cautiously approached the moon elf. The two little ones are not of high level, and it would be troublesome to encounter a startled deer. Bai Yi didn't let them go. In no time, Electric Shock Warcraft and Giant Claw Praying Mantis found the ingredients that Bai Yi needed. Bai Yi washed and chopped the tree fruits, added moo milk and honey, and boiled them together in a small milk pot. The sweet smell immediately overflowed, even the pampered Xiao Mao swallowed a little saliva. In no time, I remembered that it had attracted many elves from the psychedelic forest, including the startled deer, the little Lada, and the giant hornet. However, with the intimidation of Xiao Mao's elves, these little fish and shrimp dare not approach. A few more minutes later, the noses of these little elves twitched at the same time, as if they had seen something terrifying, and they all scattered and fled. Even the jungle bully Big Needlebee collectively turned around and flew away. Bai Yi's mouth slightly raised and finally arrived. Then, a deafening roar came from deep in the forest, followed by heavy footsteps. As footsteps approached, the forest kept shaking, and many small trees fell one after another. The giant praying mantis and electric shock beasts were on guard, looking towards the direction of footsteps, as if facing a great enemy. The water arrow turtle still sat there calmly, watching as the Johnny Turtle's eyes lit up with stars. Big Brother is domineering. Ow! A loud bear roar followed by a gust of fishy wind, and a circular bear over two meters high ran out of the forest. Bai Yi's eyes narrowed slightly, and this circled bear was covered in red light, mixed with a faint golden hue. No wonder it had almost never suffered a defeat after being conquered by Shinji. Electric Shock Warcraft took a step and stood in front of the circle bear, while the giant claw mantis teleported behind Xiao Mao, protecting the lord like a loyal guard. Jenny Turtle and Dark Crow also stood up to protect Bai Yi. Ami. Xiao Mao's water arrow turtle finally moved and walked slowly to the front of the circle bear, raising his eyes to give the circle bear a sideways glance. 
The expression on the bear's face remained fierce, but he couldn't help but take a step back. It felt that it was no match for this water arrow turtle. The water arrow turtle emitted a disdainful breath from its nose, picked up the fruit milk soup that Bai Yi had just prepared, and turned around to leave the battlefield. You fight back and forth, don't dirty my lunch. The retreat of the circle bear just now was keenly captured by Bai Yi. With Xiao Mao's electric shock warcraft and his two little brothers protecting him, Bai Yi can observe the circle bear with peace of mind. Bai Yi suddenly didn't want it anymore. Although this guy is fierce and violent, he doesn't have a belief in victory in his bones. When encountering a strong person, step back and never reach the highest peak. The movement of this circular bear's retreat is quite fluent, clearly trained through frequent beating, but in this psychedelic forest, what existence can defeat such a raging beast? Just as Bai Yi was thinking, suddenly a white light rushed out of the grass, causing the bear in the circle to stumble heavily. The speed is so fast that even the electric shock to the warcraft can react. The figure collided with the circle bear and stopped. It was only then that Bai Yi could see clearly that the figure turned out to be an Ibu. Bu Yi. Circle the bear, don't bully anyone. Ibrahimovic shook his head, it was evident that the sudden collision technique he had just used had also caused some damage to it. The bear in the circle became furious when it saw Ibrahimovic, its arms shining with white light, and its heavy hammer hit it directly. Ibrahimovic's eyes lit up, his body flickered lightly, and he dodged the hammer with ease. It's Ibrahimovic's vision. Subsequently, Ibrahimovic's two small flesh claws emitted white light, and he kicked his legs and face twice in a row, directly knocking down the bear in the circle. He can even kick twice, obviously this little guy is the elf who often cleans up the circle bears. Bai Yi took out a picture book and took a look. Ibrahimovic evolutionary Pokemon, due to genetic instability, there are various possibilities for evolution, but the number of survivors is relatively small, characteristics. Hazard prediction, properties. General series, gender. Female sign, level. 20, move. Impact, flash of electric light, high speed stars, crash, genetic move. Two consecutive kicks, teach moves. First, dig a hole in the ground, the characteristic of predicting danger is that even though she is a girl, she dares to face such a huge circle of bears. This cute little Ibrahimovic is quite good. Xiao Mao saw Bai Yi's eyes shining as he took out the picture book, smiled faintly, and straightened his waist back. Perhaps because Bai Yi's cuisine was too attractive, the circle bear became fierce this time, with white light shining on its paws and grabbing towards Ibrahimovic. Ibrahimovic should have just learned the skill of seeing through, blindly using it to dodge, but failed to use it continuously, resulting in a momentary pause in his body. As a result, he was grabbed by the bear and flew away. Be careful. Bai Yi pounced and hugged Ibu, who was flying backwards. He rolled on the ground twice before stopping. Bu Yi. The thought of pain did not come, but Ai Bi opened his eyes and saw himself being held in Bai Yi's arms. His small face turned red at the time. Bu Yi. Oh my. They were originally here to be chivalrous and righteous, but they saved them. It's so embarrassing. As long as you're okay. Bai Yi smiled, making Yi Bu's heart warm. At this moment, the circle bear charged forward again, and Yi Bu's small paw lightly stepped on Bai Yi's arm, emitting white light all over his body. He fiercely collided with his skill and once again forced the circle bear to stop. Chapter 9 Completion of Entrustment You are listening at NovelFull.audio After breaking through the circle bear, Ibrahimovic's body shook three times, and the counter damage caused by the second collision greatly consumed Ibrahimovic's stamina. The bear in the circle shook its head, its arms emitting white light, and its heavy hammer fell down again. After all, Ibrahimovic is a wild elf. Due to the previous failure in judging through, he dared not use it again and froze in place for a moment. Dig a tunnel to avoid it. 
Bai Yi suddenly issued a command, but Ai Bi didn't even think about it. He reflexively burrowed into the underground cave. The attack of the circle bear fell into thin air and roared angrily. Suddenly, Ibrahimovic crawled out of the bear's feet and directly pushed the bear out. High speed stars. Upon hearing Bai Yi's instructions, Ai Bi thought for a moment and then chose to believe in Bai Yi. With a wave of his big tail, countless golden stars flew towards the circle bear. The bear's sharp claws in the circle lit up white light, and it randomly grabbed and shattered all the stars. Two kicks. In the starlight, Ibrahimovic suddenly appeared, and his two hind legs lit up with white light. The second kick of the fighting style kicked the circle bear away directly. The bear in the circle roared unwillingly and turned around to escape into the forest. Ibrahimovic saw the bear in the circle walk away and let out a soft cry. In an instant, his body lost its strength and collapsed straight down. As a result, Ibrahimovic found himself not lying in the cold soil, but in a warm embrace. It's okay, take a good rest. Bai Yi smiled and took out a blue orange, placing it in front of Ibu. Bu Yi. Ibu's face turned red, and he lightly sniffed the blue orange in front of him. He took a small bite and took it, while Bai Yi took out the wound medicine and carefully treated Ibu's wound. After eating blue oranges and spraying injury medicine, Ibrahimovic gradually regained his spirit. A gentle breeze blew by, and Ai Bi's little nose shrugged, his eyes suddenly lit up. Then, he gently broke free from Bai Yi's embrace and walked towards the water arrow turtle, following the fragrance. Ami. No part of you. The water arrow turtle glanced at Ibu and hid the pot behind him. Upon seeing this, Ibrahimovic gritted his teeth fiercely, ready to go up and grab it at any time. Bai Yi nodded, this is the elf I want to conquer, cute and brave. All right, water arrow turtle, take it out and let's eat together, but I'll make it again. Bai Yi gently picked up Ibu, took a large spoon, took a spoonful from the soup pot, and placed it on Ibu's mouth. Are you hungry? Come on, eat quickly. Ibu gently struggled and didn't break free from Bai Yi's embrace, but the smell was too fragrant. In the end, Ibu had to obediently stick out his little tongue and lick it bit by bit. Johnny Turtle, Dark Crow, you don't need me to be polite, do you? Johnny Turtle patted his shell, saying he wouldn't be polite, and then took out a rice bowl and filled it with a bowl. Just as Johnny Turtle was about to indulge, his eyes rolled and he confidently brought the rice bowl to the water arrow turtle. Johnny Johnny. Big brother, you eat first. The water arrow turtle patted Johnny Turtle's back with satisfaction, and the young man really said. The dark crow also learned to push the rice bowl in front of the moon elf, but the moon elf showed no mercy and jumped up to Xiao Mao's leg. Xiao Mao had already made himself a bowl when Ibrahimovic and the circle bear were fighting, and now he puts the remaining half of the bowl in front of the moon elf and lets it eat slowly. Other partners also received their own share. After Ibrahimovic finished eating, he belched comfortably as he had never eaten anything so delicious before. How's it going, Ibrahimovic? Do you want to come with me? I'll be able to eat such delicious food every day in the future. Bai Yi gently placed Ibu on the ground and took out the Pake Mon Ball. Ai Bi was momentarily stunned when he saw Bai Yi take out the Pake Ball. Then, he closed his eyes and casually slept on the ground, but his wagging tail betrayed it. Bai Yi smiled slightly, still a little proud and delicate. Ibu waited for a long time, but was not subdued by Bai Yi. It thought Bai Yi had left, so it quietly opened its eyes and took a look. Bai Yijing looked at it with a mischievous smile on his face. Bu Yi. Ibrahimovic bared his teeth and rushed over, you bad guy. Surprisingly, you're laughing at me. Bite and wash you. Bai Yi took out the Pake Ball, and Ai Bi hit it head dot on. The Pake Ball opened and Ai Bi was taken in. After a slight shake, the warning light of the Pake Mon Ball went out. Through the red outer wall, one could vaguely see Ibrahimovic lying there resting with his small claws. Okay. 
I have subdued Ibrahimovic. By E happily lifted the pocket ball, and Johnny Turtle and Dark Crow also welcomed the new members in unison. When everyone has a good rest, Bai E and Xiao Mao collect their luggage, step on the Qixi Green Bird again and fly to Tianguan Mountain. Although it took some time, the weather was nice today. The two of them rushed at full speed and arrived safely at the entrance of the ruins located on the mountainside of Tianguan Mountain before sunset. As soon as the two landed, three wind speed dogs sprang out of the surrounding books, forming a pin formation to surround them. Two Miss Junsha quickly jumped down from the tree, her beautiful eyes vigilantly staring at the two of them. What kind of people are you? Don't misunderstand, we are all elf trainers. I am Daimu Mao, the assistant of Dr. Yamanashi. Xiao Mao first calmed the Qixi green bird, then slowly landed, opened his fairy atlas, and Dr. Oki's voice came out. This special elf guidebook is a gift to Xiao Mao, come on. Future trainers, and once this elf guidebook is stolen, it cannot be reissued, so please be careful. The leader Jun Sha carefully looked at the picture book and confirmed Xiao Mao's identity. Hello, Professor Daimu, are you Dr. Daimu's grandson? May I ask who this is? My name is Bai Yi, Dr. Daiki's assistant. We were commissioned by Dr. Yamanashi to carry out the task. Bai Yi also turned to get off the Qixi green bird and took out his own map to prove his identity. Hello. Teacher Bai, Teacher Daimu, it's really impolite. The leader Jun Sha bowed and then turned around to command the wind dog. Everyone stand back. Sit down. Salute. Three wind speed dogs quickly lined up and sat down, looking up to pay their respects. Due to the importance of the gun pillar ruins, Miss Jun Sha, who was stationed here, was not temporarily transferred from a certain city, but was entirely under the elite of the Shineo Special Search Department. The police elves equipped here are also well-trained wind speed dogs, with the one in the middle approaching the level of a king. It's okay, Miss Jun Sha. Please take us to meet the person in charge of this relic. I am the person in charge, the captain of the Shineo Science Special Search Team, Jun Shana. Are you here to deliver the plan for relic protection? Just leave it directly to me. Miss Jun Sha presented her documents, and Xiao Mao then handed them over to Miss Jun Sha. Miss Jun Sha signed a receipt and handed it to Xiao Mao. Then she handed the document to the sisters whose skirt was slightly shorter behind her. The Miss Jun Sha immediately took the document into the ruins. Demu, bye, thank you all for your hard work. If you don't mind, let's have a good night's rest at the campsite. It is not an exaggeration to be called a teacher, as both Bai Yi and the other two are assistants to a well-known elf doctor. Faced with Miss Junsa's invitation, the two naturally wouldn't refuse and followed her into the ruins. Chapter 10 Go to Black Gold City You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The two of them followed Miss Jun Sha into the ruins. At this moment, many maintenance tripods had been installed inside the gun pillar ruins, and the research team and security personnel had also set up camp here. As Bai Yi and the other two had tents, Miss Jun Sha did not show excessive politeness. After setting up the tent, Bai Yi asked Miss Jun Sha if she could take some photos of the remains of the gun pillars. Bai Yi is Dr. Daiki's assistant, and Miss Jun Sha certainly won't give up face. She said that as long as she doesn't queue up at the campsite, Bai Yi can do whatever she wants. Bai Yi took more than 20 photos inside the gun pillar ruins and planned to teleport them to Dr. Oki together when they arrived at a certain elf center. I don't know what teacher Bai's plans are for next. Miss Jun Sha, dressed in a short skirt, approached Bai Yi warmly and asked about her next plans. Bai Yi didn't think much and told Miss Jun Sha that her goal was the Shineo Alliance. If you want to challenge the Divine Alliance, the closest place to here is Black Gold City. Follow the road at the foot of Tianguan Mountain and you will reach Road 207, which will lead directly to Black Gold City. Undoubtedly, Miss Junsa from the Alliance headquarters is familiar with the cities and roads in the Shineo region. Thank you. Miss Junsha, 
it seems that I need to rest quickly and set off early tomorrow morning. Bai Yi thanked Miss Jun Sha and turned back to the tent. Looking at Bai Yi's back, Jun Sha's short skirt made her mouth bulge with anger, almost stomping off her high heels. Auntie Chiobao hasn't delivered it yet. Why are you in a hurry to go back to sleep? Why are handsome men so slow? After resting overnight at the camp of the Gun Pillar Ruins, the next morning, Xiao Mao and Bai Yi embarked on a journey to the first Taoist Hall. The Black Gold Taoist Hall Before leaving, Miss Jun Sha gave Bai Yi a map, which showed walking to the intersection of Ding and heading west onto Road 207 to see the Black Gold Market. As it is a regular road built at the foot of the mountain, there are not two dangerous elves to encounter. Most of them are beginner monsters such as Mucker, Round Mage, and Little Lada, as well as Shorts Boys with Grass Knots and Insect Catching Boys with Unicorns. These people, without exception, have all become experienced packs for Johnny Turtle and Dark Crow. Bucktooth Beaver Use the deadly front teeth. Johnny Turtle, use a water gun. Bai Yi saw the opponent's front teeth shining with white light and charged towards him, and directly ordered Johnny Turtle to use a water gun to charge his feet. Among the initial skills of the three royal families, although the data is the same, the direct damage that a water gun can cause is actually the lowest. However, the advantage of a water gun lies in its ability to shoot with its mouth open, so Bai Yi told Johnny Turtle that when fighting with a water gun, he should first charge his feet, and then charge his face after the opponent loses center of gravity, making it difficult for him to breathe. If you can't charge the opposite side of C, you can also hold the opposite side of C. Two water guns were fired, and the bucktooth fox on the opposite side lost its combat ability due to its mosquito repellent eyes. You won. Humph. What a stink. The shorts boy reluctantly put away the bucktooth beaver, threw down 140 yuan, and turned around to run away. Bai Yi didn't argue with him and happily accepted the money. Johnny Turtle, let's celebrate with a shrink shell. Johnny Johnny. Johnny Turtle directly retracted into its shell. After the trip started, Xiao Mao suggested that Bai Yi increase the strength of the Jenny Turtle's shell. Bai Yi naturally understood the importance of defense to the Jenny Turtle, so he let Jenny Turtle shrink its shell whenever there was something to do. Of course, this is far from enough. When it comes to the black gold market, Bai Yi plans to go to a friendly store to buy some calcium tablets for Johnny Turtle and make some energy blocks. Anyway, Bai Yi is not short of money. The previous information on super evolution, under the guidance of Dr. Daiki, with preliminary research data provided by Dr. Fat Ong and supplemented by Bai Yi, has been written into a paper and published in the academic community. The paper temporarily announced that 10 elves can undergo super evolution. At the end of the paper, Dr. Fat Ong requested the first author's signature, with Bai Yi as the second author and Dr. Daiki as the supervisor. Bai Yi doesn't feel like he's at a disadvantage, because most of this paper is the work of Dr. F.A. Tong, and he only supplemented the super evolution of the giant hornet, the fierce carp dragon, and the fierce biting land shark. Moreover, Dr. F.A. Tong gave the manuscript fee in research funding to Bai Yi, and promised that Bai Yi would be the first trainer to participate in the experiment during the experimental stage. This way, Bai Yi can not only hide his shortcomings, but also enjoy the benefits of super evolutionary versions, and also gain many benefits. In addition, there is a monthly trainer allowance of 3,000 yuan, a monthly assistant allowance of 3,500 yuan, and 1,000 yuan that Aunt Huazi secretly puts in Bai Yi's pocket. Bai Yi is not poor for the time being, but even if he is poor, he must make his elf brothers eat well. Accumulation requires sedimentation, and combat can be full. Sedimentation is much more important than blooming. Xiao Mao is an excellent water arrow turtle trainer, and the moon elves are also evil. He has helped Bai Yi a lot in cultivating elves. In the morning, the two finally reached a fork in the road where there happened to be an elf center. The two men first gave their elves a reply number, 
and then by E relied on this time to make a pot of delicious braised pork belly and a pot of stirred fried tomato and scrambled eggs with rice. Three tomatoes, by E boldly placed fifteen eggs. After all, there is still a portion of elves, and as for the ingredients, the young master of wood boldly paid for them. After the meal was served, the elves response also came to an end. Due to the lack of people in the elf center during this time period, Baye invited Miss Joey to have a meal together when he went to retrieve the elf ball. Miss Joey couldn't leave the front desk, so Baye helped Miss Joey serve a portion. There were eight elves in total. After they divided the Pokemon food, Baye poured a tablespoon of braised pork belly and a tablespoon of stirred fried tomato and scrambled eggs on each of them. Johnny Turtle held a rice bowl and sat on the legs of the water arrow turtle, with big, bright eyes. He picked up the food and tasted it, then began to work crazily without stopping. How fragrant! Ami, this little brother, he hasn't eaten good food at first glance, he's really not promising, the water arrow turtle smiled and glanced at Johnny Turtle, then took a sip with a skeptical expression. Ami! It's so delicious! The water arrow turtle only felt that the dish in front of him was glowing, and now the water cannons he sprayed were all pink. He picked up the rice bowl with both hands and poured it directly into his mouth. Electric shock to the warcraft did not show weakness. After observing the eating method of the water arrow turtle, he learned to directly pour it into his mouth and then extended the rice bowl to buy E. Alu. Another bowl. The other elves also ate happily. After finishing their meal, Bai Yi and Xiao Mao discussed and found that the 207 road was very short and the black gold market was within reach, so they were not in a hurry. Bai Yi brought a guidebook to Miss Joey to register for the participation in the Shineo League, while Johnny Turtle and Dark Crow were led by Xiao Mao. Miss Joey is very professional and completed the registration for the Bai Yi competition in less than 10 minutes. It's done, teacher Bai. Please come on, Shaneo Alliance. Thank you. Bai Yi smiled and took the guidebook and left. Miss Joey had intended to chat a little more, but unfortunately, a trainer with a bucktooth beaver arrived. Miss Joey had no choice but to give up cooking is delicious, handsome, gentle and polite, and Dr. Oki's assistant. Why isn't this little fresh meat my man? Bai Yi naturally had no idea about Miss Joey's psychological activity, but when he returned to Xiao Mao, he saw a wicked smile on his face. Coming back. I'll give you a surprise. Xiao Mao smiled and glanced at the picture book in Bai Yi's hand, then pouted at the dark crow. Bai Yi finally remembered that he had not yet read the information of the dark crow using a picture book. Dark crow, dark Pokemon people firmly believe in the belief that unlucky things will happen when they see them in the dark, and they are taboo elves. Features Sleepless, Properties Evil, Flying, Gender Male Sign, Level 18, Moves Peck, Wing Attack, Black Mist, Genetic Move Feather Perch, Teaching Skills Evil Wave, Good Guy, I've learned how to deal with bad fluctuations. Bai Yi looked at the proud dark crow and smiled, touching its head. Thank you for your hard work. It's great. The dark crow is emitting blue light all over, indicating that it only has a Taoist level qualification. However, in the future, it is not a problem to find a high dot quality dark stone for the dark crow and upgrade its qualification by one level after evolving into the crow head. Thank you, young master, and also thank you, moon elf. Tonight, I will add a meal for both of you. Bai Yi knew that the ability of the dark crow to master the evil wave so quickly was not only due to its own skill, but also due to the guidance of the moon elf and Xiao Mao. It is truly worthy of Master Mao that the dark crow can easily master such a powerful skill. Mao Gongzi closed his eyes and smiled, casually waving his hand, while the moon elf happily rubbed against Bai Yi's pants. The water arrow turtle resting in the corner saw this scene and touched its arm against the electric shock warcraft lying on the side resting. 
The two muscular uncles looked at the sleeping Johnny Turtle and tears gradually flowed from the corners of their mouths. In the afternoon, the two continued along Road 207 towards Black Gold City.